you for joining me on today's tip of the week. Today we're going to be talking about the appointment statuses inside the scheduler and how you can use that to more effectively handle your appointments. You can see the different statuses of the appointments by these different icons that are in the program. Also, if you opened up a specific appointment, you can see the status here as well, and you can change it from here. But instead of going into the appointment, most people are just going to right click on an appointment, go to change status, and select the statuses from here. And you can see the different icons associated with each of the statuses. You may notice that the canceled appointment status does not have an icon. And that is because if you do mark an appointment as canceled, it will remove the appointment from the schedule. Now, it's not deleting the appointment. So the appointment will still be in the person's record and in your appointment list on any reports that you run and whatnot. It's just removing it from the schedule so that you can put somebody else in that spot. Generally, canceled appointment means you knew ahead of time. And so if you choose to, you could put in another appointment in that time slot. Missed appointments function a little bit differently where it's kind of the same thing where somebody didn't show up, but usually a missed appointment would be done where the time for their appointment came and went. You didn't know ahead of time, so you're going to go ahead and mark that appointment as missed. The appointment stays on there because it's too late to schedule somebody else in that spot. So we're going to go ahead and mark Annie Davis's appointment as canceled. You'll see that there is a place that comes up here for me to type in a reason if I'd like to. So I'm going to say that she had a sick child and hit OK. And now we see that that appointment disappeared. Missed appointments also pop up with that little box to type in a reason if you choose to. Although most of the time with missed appointments, again, because the time came and went, you didn't necessarily talk to them. You don't necessarily know what the reason is. But if you want to put in a reason, you can. Both of those two statuses, missed and canceled, do also keep a running total of how many missed and canceled appointments somebody has. So let's say, for example, I was going to schedule Annie Davis for next week and I went into a specific time to do that, pulled her up. You'll notice that a window pops up here with all of her missed and canceled appointments, when they were, uh, if there was a reason what they were, and so on. If I click close, it's going to give me a count of each of those here. So if they had three missed appointments, it would say the number three. If you clicked on it, it's going to show you all of them on there. So that way, if you have somebody that chronically misses or cancels appointments, this will warn you when you're scheduling the appointment. That way, you can either maybe not schedule them, or you might want to double book during that time just in case they don't show up or whatever it happens to be. Now, if we come back here to today, another thing you might notice is that grayed out appointments here are the completed ones. So if there's a checkbox, it means it's been marked complete. Generally, you're going to do that when you have seen the patient, put in all the charges for the patient, and that appointment can be completed for the day. Also, if we go to change status, some of these statuses in here, for example, checked in, being seen, checked out, there's a timer that runs in the background. So when you change from these different statuses, there's a timer going on. So for example, you can run a report called the appointment time analysis report. So if we go to reports, we can look at this report and it'll tell you, for example, how late somebody might have been, how long they were in the waiting room, how long they were being seen for. That way you have a, an idea of kind of what's going on in your practice. Are people waiting in the waiting room too long? Or if somebody writes a review on a website about how long they waited and you could come in and figure out if they really indeed did wait as long as they say they did. Or for example, if you're scheduling new patient appointments to be 30 minutes and you're noticing that every time you know new patient appointments come in that it's actually 40 minutes or whatever 45 minutes then maybe you start changing the amount of default time that you've set up for that type of appointment or whatnot so the statuses can really help you more efficiently run your practice from a scheduling standpoint and so Hopefully this has been a beneficial tip of the week for you. Uh, we hope you'll join us again next time.